Hi everybody. Today we are going to see another module on gluten formation. In this module you are going to learn about gluten formation. It is not surprising that people have a difficult time understanding gluten because it does not exist in nature. Gluten is a water insoluble protein that is formed when water is mixed with wheat flour. Proteins are very large molecules composed of amino acids. There are two naturally occurring proteins in flour called glutenin and gliadin. Glutenin provides strength and elasticity. What is strength? Strength is nothing but tenacity which is a measure of how much force is needed to stretch the dough. Elasticity means the ability to bounce back once dough is stretched whereas gliadin provides extensibility or stretchiness. Now we are going to see the objectives of this module. They are to define the formation and development of gluten. Identify the use of gluten in bakery and other industries. Describe the factors affecting gluten strength. Gluten development. First we will see how the gluten is developed. Gluten is the common name for proteins present in all forms of wheat and related grain species like barley, rye and triticale. Triticale is the hybrid variety of wheat and rye. Gluten is a critical functional protein component in wheat based doughs. Gluten is formed when two classes of wheat insoluble proteins in which flour, glutenin and gliadin are hydrated with water and mixed. When the mechanical shear is applied it helps in the formation of gluten bonds which is a tough rubbery substance and become a viscoelastic matrix holding the starch granules in the flour. Only a batter or dough can contain gluten but not the raw flour. Disulfide bonds are formed between the gluten and gliadin. Now we are going to see the factors affecting the development and strength of gluten. If too much gluten develops, it makes baked foods like pie crust tough rather than tender. Weaker gluten is more extensible that is make it stretchable and does not shrink as much. Here are some of the factors that affect gluten development. We are going to see all those factors. Wheat varieties. Soft wheat contains less protein about 6 to 8 percent, less glutenin, smaller proteins, forms weaker gluten. Hard wheat contains more protein about 10 to 14 percent more glutenin larger proteins form stronger more cohesive elastic gluten now we will see about the quantity of water hydration is essential for gluten development gluten and gliadin are absorbed about twice their weight of water less water results in less gluten development. It reduces protein mobility but too much water also reduces gluten development by diluting the proteins so much that their interaction is restricted. Hardness of water. Calcium and magnesium in hard water strengthen gluten. Now water pH. The ideal pH 
for gluten development is 5 to 6. Above and below pH to 5 to 6 reduces gluten strength, producing more extensible, easier to stretch dose. Adding baking soda raises the pH, producing more cookie spread and more porous tender crumb. Eleven, it explaining air bubbles strengthen gluten, increasing cohesiveness and elasticity, producing higher volume and finer crumb. Enzymes. Enzymes that break down proteins are naturally present in flour but inactive when dry. These enzymes break down gluten into smaller pieces so dough becomes softer and more extensible. Autolyse is nothing but resting dough for 15 to 30 minutes is a process which allows time for enzymes to break down gluten to produce more extensible dough providing more volume and open crumb. Salt. Bread dough contains 1.5 to 2% salt by weight of flour. Salt slows enzyme activity and rate of fermentation. Salt strengthens gluten, producing bread with higher volume and finer crumbs. Other factors, fat, oil, emulsifiers and sugars tenderize dough. Fat and emulsifiers coat protein, reducing hydration and gluten development, like oil coating spaghetti. Shortening shortens gluten strands, producing a more tender baked goods. Sugar competes for water, reducing protein, hydration and gluten development. Now we will see about the uses of gluten. Grains containing gluten are used as ingredients for a wide range of prepared and commercial foods. Wheat flour alone is found in thousands of products due to its ability to give product structure and assist with the thickening and coating of products. In addition to the gluten, Found in grains, gluten can also be added as a separate ingredient in its own right. This product is made from washing the starch out of a flour slurry. The additional gluten is used in the bread industry to supplement the gluten naturally present in flour and subsequent dough. To the baker, gluten adds valuable properties like increased dough strength, better gas retention and elasticity which gives products good structure, uniform shape and to bread. Better wash absorption and retention, improving yield, product softness and extending shelf life of bread. It enhances flavor. Gluten can also be useful ingredient in products other than bakery items such as. We will see about the batter. Ensuring a durable attention of batter crust to foods is a quality problem, especially in frozen foods. Using a dusting of gluten powder before applying the batter vasti improves the addition in both hot and cold temperatures and the results are comparable to egg which is more expensive. The gluten also assists when food mixtures as the product is better sealed and the surface crust that results in crispier and more appealing. Pasta. Pasta manufacturers prefer to use semolina 
made from durum wheat as it produces better quality pasta. However, the addition of gluten to semolina made from other wheat varieties can improve their suitability for pasta doughs. Meat Products Gluten is widely used in processed meats as a binding and enriching ingredient. It is used in beef, pork and chicken sausage products and as a common ingredient of pizza toppings. Let us see about the functions of gluten in baking and cooking. Now we will look into the functions of gluten. Gluten formation is critical to the volume, texture and appearance of a product. When the proteins in the flour are hydrated and the dough that is batter is mixed, gluten bonds provides structure and elasticity. The amount of gluten formation is dependent on the application. Less gluten formation is desired in a tender cake whereas high amount of gluten formation is needed for chewy artisan bread. When gluten bonds are formed, the protein will have the ability to form elastic films in the dough which provide structure and helps to trap gases assisting in leavening of products. When heated, the gluten proteins coagulate, it gets solidifies and a semi-rigid structure forms providing characteristic textures of various feed-based products. Starches are also an important component in wheat flour that is 63 to 77 percent. As the product is heated, the starches absorb moisture and gelatinize that is it gets stiffens adding to the texture of the finished product. The unique composition of nutrients in wheat flour like fat, minerals, moisture, starches and proteins provide the characteristic taste and texture attribute to wheat based products. Let us learn about how to develop gluten in bread. Bread is an important breakfast item. Nobody will say I don't like bread. As we all know, gluten is a protein found in cereal grains and it is the major functional component in wheat flour. Different wheat flours have different protein content. Pastry flour has less protein and yields a softer, finer product whereas bread flour has more protein and yields a firmer, final product. All-purpose flour which has an average protein content that works well for making dough products is also extracted from wheat for use in other food products. Vital wheat gluten is often added to meat substitute products as well to help them strengthen and structure. From a nutritional standpoint, Gluten provides calories, protein, carbohydrates and some fat. When making bread, it is important to understand how to properly develop gluten in order to prevent it from tearing or stickying during the preparation process. We are going to observe that stepwise. In step 1, Blend all the dry ingredients together well to your dough. Blending the ingredients well before adding water will ensure that the ingredients do not become entrapped in isolated clumps once the water has been added. Now in step 2, 
Add the water to the dough while mixing slowly. Incorporating water dissolves the ingredients and begins hydrating the gluten on the surface of the flour. Adding the water slowly allows more time for hydrating the gluten and more time for the gluten particles to interact with one another. After the water is added, the dough should start to become sticky and cohesive. This is a sign that the gluten is hydrating but it has not started developing yet at this stage. If the dough still looks dry after the water has been added, according to your recipe, gradually add a little more water at a time to fully hydrate the gluten. If you have added too much water, the dough looks soupy. Now we are going to see the step 3. Mix the dough more vigorously. More energy is required for mixing the gluten particles to interact and create a matrix that allows for the entrapment and expansion of air. At the start of this process, the dough should be sticking together and forming a cohesive mass. Your goal at this stage is to turn the sticky ball without any elastic properties into a drier ball that is very elastic and holds its shape well. If the dough becomes overmixed, it will lose the elasticity and look as if it were overhydrated. Now in step 4, check the dough for proper gluten development. If the gluten is not developed completely at this point, the dough can still be saved by adding more water or mixing longer or by a combination of both. The dough should be a cohesive mass that is smooth throughout. If the dough is mixed properly and the gluten is completely developed, it will be slightly sticky or not sticky at all when handled and will stay as one piece when moved. A small piece of dough should stretch without tearing when stretched gently in your hands. You should be able to stretch it until it be forms a thin translucent film without having any thick spots or tears. Let us see the instructions to be followed. Best way to get proficient for proper development of gluten in bread is by practicing and experimenting this process. Add adequate amount of water for mixing the dough. Water level needed in dough can fluctuate depending on the humidity, storage and variety. When using whole wheat flours or whole grain flours, extra water and extra mixing will be required. Vital wheat gluten can be used in dough like corn flour or rye flour. What role does gluten play in bread making? Is it a big question for everybody? Usually bread flour does not contain large amounts of protein approximately between 10.5 to 13 percent but it is very important for the bread making process. When flour is mixed with water the gluten swells to form a continuous network of fine strength. This network forms the structure of bread dough and makes it elastic and extensible. The bread making steps are listed and the role which gluten plays in these steps are highlighted. Kneading, otherwise high speed mixing in bakeries. The addition of water to flour causes 
hydration of the gliadin and glutenin proteins and leads to the formation of gluten. This stage works with the dough which strengthen the gluten complexes. Stress induced by mixing breaks bonds between protein chains allowing the chains to move and become realigned. The new bonds that are formed allow relaxation of the dough. Gluten strengthening or oxidizing agents such as ascorbic acid stimulate the formation of these new bonds strengthening the dough structure. Proofing is nothing but rising. At the stage starch breakdown and fermentation occur. As bread dough ferments and proves, the yeast produces carbon dioxide gas that causes the gluten network to expand. This leaves an open cellular structure with the gases trapped in packets. The quality of gluten in dough is very important. If gluten is too weak, it can't stretch in thin films around the air bubbles produced during fermentation. The gas bubbles would then swell and burst, causing the loaf to lack volume. If gluten is too strong, then it won't stretch, so the gas bubbles cannot expand, causing a very dense loaf. A model which can be used to explain the mixing and proofing stage is the action of bubble gum. Firstly, the gum is hydrated in the mouth by saliva, then mixed and softened by chewing until it forms an elastic mass. This is then able to expand and support an air bubble. Let us see baking. As bread bakes, the gluten protein coagulates. This sets the gluten so that it is no longer elastic and determines the bread size and shape. This change does not reverse when bread is cooled. The end result after removal from the oven and cooling should be a firm but open and light textured loaf of bread. Let us see manufacturing of gluten. To obtain gluten, flour is mixed with water and the starch is washed out. This process is completed commercially and a great deal of care is needed to maintain the baking quality of gluten. In step 1, the flour and water are mixed together. The resulting dough is left to rest to allow the protein components time to absorb the water. In step 2, the dough is then conveyed into long horizontal water filled tank containing screw type conveyors which knead the dough until all the starch is suspended in the wash water. In step 3, all the remains between the screw is the gluten mass which is then forced through fine openings, chopped into small pieces and dried in a hot turbulent air steam ready for bagging. There are different strength of commercial gluten, stronger glutens are usually a grayish green color while weaker glutens are yellow. Commercial gluten is available as either a dried powder or in a wet form which contains moisture 8%, protein 70-75%, to 75%, fat 5-8%, to 8%, starch 11-16% to 16%, and fiber 1%. This is the approximate composition of dry gluten is 
let us see the usage of commercial gluten commercial gluten is also available in the market when compared to flour commercial gluten is an expensive product at about 6 times higher price so it should be used at only the record level to meet product quality requirements some useful points to remember when using gluten as an ingredient at home or in a bakery settings are to make a useful improvement in the dough structure based on cereal weight around 4% of extra gluten is added more water is required for the addition of dry gluten to a bread formula this is approximately 1.5 times the weight of gluten added for us to remember celiac disease is a bowel disease that damages the lining of the intestine which is sparked by the body's adverse reaction to gluten. People with celiac diseases should avoid eating foods with added vital wheat gluten or that are made with wheat and should consult a nutritionist about relevant dietary instructions. There is no extra benefits to a gluten-free diet unless a person has celiac disease or has identified a low level intolerance or sensitivity to gluten. Now to conclude this module, gluten constitute about 80% of the proteins in wheat and is composed of the protein gliadin and glutenin. Also found in endosperm of some cereals notably rye and barley the gluten protein is the predominant fraction controlling the viscoelastic properties of dough in bread making factors like wheat varieties quantity hardness and ph of water used to make the dough enzymes and salt also affect the development of gluten formation. Let us see in another module. Bye to everyone.